Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create basic fur and hair with Dynamics. First I'm going to show you how to set up the fur and hair. Then we will start to add hair dynamics with collision and different effectors. After that I also show you how to create a vertex map to define where the hair should grow. I also show you how to create this cool hair grow effect and in the end we will create the hair material. So buckle up and let's get started. Let's start out in a blank scene and I will add a sphere just to show you how everything works. If you want you can do this for any other object you have in your scene. Select your object, go into the particle settings and add a new particle system. After that we have to change it from emitter to hair. And as you can see hair spawns in already. They are a little bit long for my opinion so we can change the hair length down here. So let's scale this one down. If you want more hair we could up this number right here but this is really heavy for our PC. The better solution is to go into the children's tab and select interpolated. And as you can see more hair spawns in. The display amount I would set to around 20 so we can kind of see how it looks in the end. And for the render amount I would set it to 50. But this can depend on how your scene looks and how far away you are from your object. Now if you want to stylize your hair we can go down here and play around with these settings. Let's open up parting and clumping and if we move those two sliders up you can see the hair clumps at the tips. We can also play around with the shape to get a bigger overall shape in the middle and if we up the clump setting the pointier it gets. With the parting slider you can see the hair gets closer together or further apart. Just play around with it until you find the setting you like. Also on the roughness you can get more variation and more randomness in your hair. Again here as before play around with the setting until you find the thing you like. And for me that's good for now. Let's start to add the hair dynamics. All we have to do for that is activate the hair dynamics setting right here. If we hit play on the timeline you can see the hair animation already starts or the simulation and the hair falls down. Right now I will animate the sphere, so I will set a keyframe by pressing I on the keyboard. Let's go a little bit further in the timeline and let's move it up here. And let's rotate it a bit on the set axis just to get some variation and press I again. Now to restart the simulation always go to the first frame and then let's press play to see how this looks. If for some reason the hair is too floppy for you, you can go under structure and play around with the stiffness, random and damping setting. The higher the stiffness is, so let's set it to 10 just to show you how it looks and let's press play. You can see the hair barely moves and it's super stiff and straight. The lower this setting right here is, so let's put the stiffness to 0.1, the more the hair flops around and dangles down to the ground. You could also go to volume and play around with the air drag. The higher the air drag is, so let's put this to 10, the more the hair is affected by movement. So you can see if the hair drag is 10, the hair really falls back in the opposite direction of the movement. If we set the air drag to let's say 0.1, you can see the hair is not that much affected by the movement of the object. Let's say we want to have a large air drag, so let's put it back to 10, but we don't want that the hair clips through your object. There's a simple solution for it, we just select the object we want to have collision on, go into the physics section and add a collision modifier. You can see the hair clips a little bit less through the object and then we can play around with the different settings down here. Normally I set the damping to 1 and maybe up the outer thickness a little bit. Alright perfect, we have close to no clipping again. Let's say the hair is way longer and we want it to collide it with the other object down here. We would do the exact same thing. We select the object, go into the physics section and add the collision modifier. If we now press play you can see the hair won't clip through the object or it will clip a little bit so we have to adjust those settings again but you can see it has collision on and the hair will collide with the object. Let's say your object stays still but you have wind going on in your scene and you want the hair to react to the wind. All we have to do for that is go shift A and under force field we can add a wind force field. Let's move this to the side and rotate it a little bit. Let's go into the settings and up the strengths. And if we reset the simulation now you can see the hair is affected by the wind. To have more variation in your wind and to see the effect better just play around with the strengths value and also keyframe them by just hovering over the setting and press I. Then add different values to it to get those wind movements. Alright, the next thing we look into is vertex maps. 
Therefore we have to change it from object mode to weight paint mode. For now I will deselect the hair particle system just so we can focus on the painting. Right now the whole object is blue but if you select your paintbrush you can draw over the object and get those funny looking colors. What do those colors represent? In our case it means blue is nothing and red is full on hair. So the more area you paint with red the more hair you will get on there. You can also play around with the strengths so you get a smoother transition but all in all you can paint here where you want your hair to grow. To find this vertex painting right here we can go into the data setting of the object and we have the vertex group right here. Let's change the name here to hair1 and let's switch back into object mode. Now in our particle settings we can scroll all the way down to vertex groups. Here we have different options where we want to place our vertex map. In our case we have to set the vertex map to the density setting. So let's select this one right here and choose the hair one we created before. Now if we activate our particle system again and go back to the frame one, you can see the hair only grows there where we painted it red. If we now want to use the effect of shorter hair in not so red areas, so let's put the strengths down and draw over here. So here we want to have a little shorter hair, so the color is green. Let's go on to the other side, let's do the same over here too. Alright, let's go back into object mode and activate the hair again. And hmm, we can see the hair actually grows the same length as in the red parts. Why is that? That's because we have to add the vertex paint we did to the length. So let's select the length and also select the hair one. And as you can see the hair is way shorter on the areas where we painted green and not red. With taking this a little bit more seriously, you can create super cool fur or hair for your characters and objects. Alright, in the showcase video you saw the hair grow effect. And it's actually super easy to achieve. Therefore, we go into the children's settings again. There we have a setting called length. If you lower this, you can see the hair gets shorter. All you have to do for the effect now is start with zero, hover over the setting and press I to set a keyframe, then move a little bit forward in your timeline, let's say frame 30, and set the length to one and press I again to set the second keyframe. Now if we play the animation, you can see we get this hair growing effect. It's actually super simple to achieve, but in my opinion, this is a super cool effect and I'm sure you can use this somehow in your projects. Good, last but not least we have to create the hair material. Therefore let's go into the materials tab and add in a new one. And instead of using the principal BSDF, we can click on it and select the hair BSDF. This one is exactly what we need because it has the right reflection and the right transmission settings. All we have to do now is change the color of it. And you could also change the roughness if you don't like the default settings. But in my opinion the default setting just look, look the best. And alright, there you have it. This is how to create basic fur on hair for your objects or your characters. I hope you could learn something today and if you have some questions just write them in the comments and I will see you the next time. Peace out.